Hey guys, Demeter from the H Studio Design Academy. In this video, we're going to do an update for Blender 2.8 Plus for the most essential add-ons for architectural design within Blender. This is going to be a series of videos. In this first video, we're going to cover the add-ons that ship with Blender, so the most, the 10 most important add-ons. Then we'll cover another video with free add-ons that need to be downloaded separately a third video with the paid add-ons, and they will sum it up with the top five most, most essential ones. Uh, there's also going to be a link to written references in the video description, which you can bookmark and go back and see if you forget one, or you always have it as a reference to see which add-on you may need to use for which purpose. So let's get started. The first one is tissue. It's a tessellating add-on, non-destructive, essentially, we get a panel and we can apply it over a mesh. It's excellent for facades and many other instances like computational design. There's a playlist on my channel with my videos and other people's videos on how to use tissue in more detail. So let's first enable it. Go to preferences, add-ons, search for tissue. And once it's enabled, in your sidebar, press and if you don't see it, you should have a new tab called tissue. So select a panel, shift select your base mesh, press tessellate, and there's a pop-up, press OK. That's essentially it. We can change a lot of these settings later. If we go, if we click on our tessellation, go to object data, all the way on the bottom, there's a new tab called tessellate settings. So let's increase the scale. And if we change something within this panel, we can hit refresh and it will change automatically. Next, offset edges. So it's very simple add-on. It's a feature that's always been missing. There's been add-on now that's thankfully been made part of Blender. So edit preferences. It comes part as part of an add-on called edit mesh tools. So search for that, enable it. Click an object, go into edit mode, select an edge, and it comes in a tab called edit. So the mesh tools, it, it has a series of tools, some are embedded part of Blender, some are add-ons, and it just it's a nice package that packages all those elements. So if you expand edge tools, and there it is, offset edges. Once you run it, if you don't see this menu here, click Offset Edges to, to expand it, and we can change the setting. It, it's the exact same I don't as before. And we can change the extrusion and the angle. So very useful add-on. Next one is called Sure UVW. And again, that's been nicely bundled with an add-on called Magic UV, which is a series of different UV operators. Um, hope you like my nice big bricks. I've only done them so so you can see the texture from a little bit further away. Not that I think that they sh we should have a building with such large bricks. Anyways, so let's add a cube, scale it up. It's very important that our object scale is one to one. So control L, apply scale, now it's one to one. So now we Let's apply the brick material. Next, go into edit mode. Select everything, A, U, for UV mapping, UVW should be all the way on the bottom and press box. And that's it. Basically, it makes sure that all the objects, no matter what size they are, as long as they're one-to-one -one in an object size, is that the right way to say it? As long as they're one-to-one -one object, in object in edit bleh. as long as they're one to one in object mode i think we're good and it makes sure that all the patterns are exactly the same next we have an object called scatter tools so let's search for it scatter objects rather so enable it and it allows us to paint and this doesn't use particle systems. There's another pay that on that we'll cover later, but this one allows you to paint instances of an object on top of a mesh. So let's try it. 
I'll select this building here, shift select the surface, and then F3 to search. Uh, it doesn't have any button as far as I'm aware anywhere, so we need to search for scatter objects. Press enter, and nothing happens, but now we can paint. And we can modify the settings if we go to the tool menus. And in here, there's a pop-up called object scatter. We can change density, radius, scale, and seed. And then once you're done, press enter to apply. Now this is, again, there are instances, but to my knowledge, there's no way to modify them once they've been built. Let me just hide this guy. Next one is called Tiny Cat, and it essentially allows you to intersect edges. So in here I have an example. Actually, this example has already been created, so let me rebuild it really quickly by selecting some of these vertices. I think this may be the sixth time I'm re-recording this video to make sure I get it right, because Last time, it didn't go so well. I hopefully have learned a little bit more about video making, video talking as well, and how to use my mic. All right, so now we have two edges. Let's make sure that it's applied. Tiny Cat Mesh Tools. So in edit mode, select those two edges, right click, VTX Auto. And what it does is it creates a edge exactly at that intersection. Let's do the same with the bottom, VTX Auto. And now we can, re we can recreate this with a nice and proper intersection in the middle. Okay. The next add-on is called Archipack. Let's enable it. Search for Archipack and click Enable. And essentially it allows us to create parametric simple objects like walls, windows, doors, stairs, trusses, fences, and roofs. And they're all very nice and parametric. Let's see what I mean by that. Well, let's start with the stair here. If I click on it, and we have, so all the add-ons in 2.8 they should have tabs in this sidebar here. So let's click on Archipack, Manipulate. And now we can sort of add all, um, edit all the settings parametrically. What does that mean? That if we edit, you know, the first run, the second one doesn't get edited. If we edit the second and so on. And it's a very nice add-on and you can play with it. You can change many, many settings in here. Feel free to explore them further. I do have a video specifically on stairs with Archipack. So check it out in my channel. And let's try another simple element. Let's create a, a, a wall. So let's draw here. Draw there. Draw there. There you go. And now let's create windows. So if you click this little icon here, it should allow you to put it exactly on the face. Now, when I first ran Archipack on a new machine, these icons were not there. So if, if that happens to be the case for you, go back to your preferences. And within the Archipack, there is an option that says render preset thumbs. When you click that, it's going to render out all the preset settings. But make sure that you save all your work, because it may take a little bit of time to do. So once you've done that, close Blender and open it again. And when you want to add a window or a door, now you should have all your presets there. So let's try adding a window. And you see how nicely it snaps. Let's add a door. And all these again have a series. Whoops, that's not a door. Well, anyways, you get the point. So all these have 
really nice settings that we can change and modify and make them to any way we want. Next, bool tool. So this essentially speeds up the process of Boolean creation by automating the steps of adding a modifier, of changing the object to wireframe, and to making sure that it's not visible when we render it out. So let's click on one of these objects here. Let's find it in my menu and you see it's not rendered and it's wireframe and it's part of this. So let's see how it works. Enable bool tool. And what I also like to do is display as wireframe. If this is unchecked, it displays as bounding box, but sometimes it's difficult to understand what the object is if it's displayed as bounding box. That's why I prefer to enable this option. So let's check it out. So here's the same sort of wonderful creation of boxes. You call it an architectural concept if you like. So let's shift click these two and it lives under the edit submenu so we have auto boolean so these are destructive and then brush boolean which use the modifiers and these are the non-destructive types so let's press union so that became one and let's click this guy and this guy and press difference so the method of the order is you first select the object that you want to be removed or added and then you select the object from which you want it to be removed or added. Let's do the same with these. Uh, difference. And you can see how much faster, it just saves quite a bit of time of doing this manually. So I really, it's come to be one of my favorite add-ons. Next one is called modifier tools. So this one, let's enable it first. Should be enabled on my computer. Yep, modifier tools. So if we click back on here, all the way on top, you see we have four buttons. And um, we can either view all the elements, we can apply all of them, we can delete all of them, or we can expand and contract them. This is more of a UI tool, but I find it very essential for my workflow for architectural design. The next one called stored views is very similar in that sense that it's more of a UI. So let's look for stored views. Once it's enabled, it lives in the view um, tab all the way on the bottom. I think you may have to click initialize if you haven't before. So once you click initialize, you should have a menu that sort of looks like this without, let's get rid of these without any cameras or views or if you have and you're seeing some they'll come up as well so what does it do it's 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 very similar to the way that rhino and sketchup work we can go to any view and save it let's go here save current and now if i want i can go back to one view or to the other now this is just a view this is not a camera but we can do the same with the camera let me hide these guys. So let's say I like a camera here and new camera to view. So if we click on this option, it creates a camera. Now it's not perfect. You know, I wish the, the, the camera angle focal length was a little bit shallower, but at least it gives us the right position that we can modify a little bit later. So besides setting up views and cameras, we can really easily recall cameras by just clicking on them here. Uh, I think let's see where do I need to click. So yeah, if you don't have, if you're not in camera view, you need to click this little button here. Again, I find it very useful for just general understanding because we always work with a lot of cameras, a lot of different angles in architecture design. So it's quite important to be able to see them quickly. Okay, and the last one is called Align Tools. So if you look for Align Tools. Enable it, and it's, it, it does exactly what it says. Let's say we have these three objects here. Once you enable it, it lives in the item submenu, all the way on the bottom, align tools. So let's say we want all these to be aligned along the Y axis or undo. And let's say we want them aligned along the X axis. Let's grab this guy as well. And that's it. it. It takes the active object as the one that aligns everything to. It can also align rotation and scale. That's it for this video. 
make sure you stay tuned and you subscribe to see the other videos when they come up and thank you for watching feel free to let me know what your favorite add-ons are for architectural concept design thanks